weekly in-depth view of agriculture up close. This is In the Field. Presented by Gordon's Feed and Pet. Located on the quiet streets of Windyville sits the newly opened General Store, opening its doors to its unique history. I purchased the store back in December of 2015. And originally, I wanted to make it into a bed and breakfast because people had been wanting to break into the store for years, trying to get in due to the ghost hunting. So I figured if they wanted to come into the store so bad, we could let them legally come in and stay the night and do their ghost hunting. So you mentioned ghost hunting. Tell me about the history of that here in Wendyville. There was a book published back in the early 90s um, by a local gentleman that had a bunch of the ghost hunting stories, and that's more Missouri ghost. And back then, a lot of people were coming to Windyville just to investigate those. Those stories had leaked their way online and um, in the early internet days, and that's actually how I found Windyville. It was as a kid coming down to Bennett Springs, I would look up the names of the little towns when I got back home and I had seen all the ghost stories about Windyville and was fascinated and had come back to see the area and had, the store was completely abandoned at that time and I just always wanted to go inside and thought it was really cool. So the idea started with um, a place for uh, ghost enthusiasts to come and stay but then I understand that uh, locals were interested in the general store. David, you served as a contractor kind of renovating everything. Take me through um, that process and how you preserve the idea of the general store and uh, the local history. When Katie hired me to take this project on it was there was a lot to do for sure and uh, we just started in one area, started tearing out the walls and we just did it day by day as we got one wall rebuilt and put up we started another one till we started the bedrooms and we built the bathrooms and finally about a year later we had everything kind of how we wanted it and in place and a lot of people were interested in if we were going to be a store I told them then it was more of a bed and breakfast mm -hmm. and then the ideas come up that if they had some small things and general store items that people could come in here and stop so that's pretty well where it came from. We were trying to keep everything as original as possible and reuse everything. And this is the old roof that was on the outside. We used it on the inside. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the wood that we tore off, we found old signs and different things that was kind of neat. We reused all the old barn wood that was on the outside. And the original ceilings in here are in the bathroom. We used them for the walls of the bathroom. Oh, cool. And just it was tongue and groove, it was nice wood, some of it was in bad shape, some of it wasn't. So we recycled what we could and tried to use anything that we could to put it back in the store. So I understand that one of the first original owners, Herbert Scott, um, you found a sign, one of the original signs, and you're able to display it in the store. A local gentleman um, had bought the sign years ago when it was taken off the building by some previous owners, and they were going to scrap it and he explained to them they couldn't do that because that was Wendyville history and it was important to them. So he purchased it and then when we were about six months into the renovation, um, he had stored it outside for 25, 30 years that whole time. And when we were into our renovation, he came over and asked us if we would like to buy it back. And for the same price he purchased it for that 30 years ago, which was a whole $60. So we were able to get back the original sign and everybody gets a kick out of it when they come in. and. When you get up close to it, you can see that it's hand-painted letters. We also tracked down the original store counter behind me. That had been sold by some previous people who were renting the property um, about three to four years prior to me purchasing it. And through an online search, we were able to find it down in Hollister, Missouri. And so we contacted the people who had purchased it, and they allowed us to buy it back and bring it back home where it belongs. And I have seen on, hanging on some walls some really cool iconic documents that you found that truly preserve the history. Yeah, we ran across a, a gold mine of old receipts and documents and stuff from 1936. And uh, going through them, a lot of the local names around here, and I thought that was neat. And uh, I've even had grandkids come in and say they've heard about a receipt from their grandpa. And what did he buy that day? And uh, I do know in 1936, a box of 22 shells was 25 cents. So 
gone up a little bit. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we found a bunch of old potato sacks that we've got kind of displayed, and they're kind of neat. They're just all different kinds from all different places, and don't know how old they are, but they're super old, and they're all different. And so fast forwarding to July 2018 when you opened, Katie, walk me through uh, the property, the store, and what uh, locals and, and tourists alike can come see. When people come to the store, they can bring the kids to get old-fashioned candy like they would have when they were a kid growing up. We also have old-fashioned toys, the glass bottled soda pop, and we have home decor items, and we're pretty much the only place in the whole world you can get Wendyville souvenirs. <laughs> And then also on the bed and breakfast side, people that want to spend the night um, and stay in an old-timey general store, whether it be just to get away or whether it be because they want to go ghost hunting, we do offer two bedrooms. And we have a family room to accommodate more people and then also a king-size bedroom in the back um, so they can come stay and they get free run of the store at night and they get to explore and um, they also get an old-fashioned store tab just like they used to have in the old times. Katie, let's talk about the future. You purchased the cannery that uh, sits just behind the general store. What plans do you have for it? On the cannery, we want to make it into like an event venue for people. So we would like to have like bluegrass people come down and sing and play. Um, also where people could have family reunions, um, just to provide shelter basically for the weather and elements. Also in the fall, we plan to have a big walk through haunted house for the kids, um, pumpkin patch, things like that, just everything to do with family time and how things used to be and putting the cell phones down and visiting a little bit. You know, so David, when can we expect uh, the Winneville Cannery to be open? We're shooting for the end of August, September, somewhere in there. There's a lot of work to be done. It's been cold right now and everything, but uh, we're hoping by the end of August or so and have it opened up and, and we'll go from there. So I know over the years you've heard many stories about uh, the Winneville Ghost and you stay the night here and, and heard some things, but I understand that there's been some guests that wouldn't stay the night. Yes, there have been several guests that have left in the middle of the night. I'll get a text message or a call letting me know that they're leaving and where they've hidden my key. And um, so we created a t-shirt kind of incentive program for people that do stay the night. If they can make it through the whole night, they get a nice survived Wendyville t-shirt. To learn more about this historic general store in Windyville, Missouri, visit windyvillestore.com and find them on Facebook at Windyville Cozy Cottage.